Friday this week, we'll be back here at Lucky's Pub downtown on Emanuel Street. Special guests include Marshall Falk, Larry Fitzgerald, T.I. Doors open 7.30 a.m. local time. Show starts at 9 a.m. local. Pack the house. We love having you guys down here with us. I'm back. I believe that I'm better than you. I got one thing to say. This is my house. Woo! I built this, and this is my house. All these people are here, they came to see me. To the 10, to the 5, oh, oh, the what, what time is it? It's prime time, prime time, prime time. Time Deion Sanders, but we're going to switch gears here, which we know you can do, to the association. So a little beef going on with LeBron and Ooh. Charles Barkley. We want to get you caught up on the latest. It all started with Barkley's reaction to King James saying this. Something that we know that's going to make us a really, really good team. If we're going to add a veteran point guard, we just haven't been in the position to capture one. But this is something we knew from the beginning. Does he want all the good players? He don't want to compete? He says he needs help. Listen, he's the best player in the world. He's got plenty of help. The Cleveland Cavaliers, they have given him everything he wanted. They have the highest payroll in NBA history. They're the defending champs. And for him to be trying to hold anything over Dan Gibbons head, inappropriate, whiny, all the above. He wanted J.R. Smith last summer. They paid him. He wanted Shumpert last summer. He's got Kyrie Irving and Kevin Love. He wants everybody. He don't want to compete. He want to be the favorite all the time. It just pisses me off that a guy that great don't want to compete. And so it begins. So here's the deal. King James was over Sir Charles' repeated jabs. He clapped back, and it got personal. Here's the quote. He's a hater. What makes what he says credible? Because he's on TV. I'm not going to let him disrespect my legacy like that. I'm not the one who threw somebody through a window. I never spit on a kid. I never had unpaid debt in Las Vegas. I never said, quote, I'm not a role model. I never showed up to All-Star Weekend on Sunday because I was in Vegas all weekend partying. And now we have this. Charles, the floor is yours. I don't overreact. I'm not going to say anything bad about him or get personal. I stick by what I said. He was all whiny and everything last week. Uh, so I'm good, man. I don't, if I'm going to be straightforward, like I always try to be, I know guys going to come back at me sometimes. So I'm good. Uh, he got personal, but like I say, I'm never going to get personal on an NBA player. So that's the latest. Stephen A., talk to me. Well, first of all, I want to say, and I'm happy Prime Thomas here because I definitely wanted to get his take on that because this guy was an epic superstar and he's qualified more so than I am to speak on the subject. What I will say is this. I think that LeBron stepped over the line in terms of how personal he got towards Barkley. Barkley has been ultra critical of LeBron at times. Some would say I have, even though I disagree with that. Others would say others have. But the bottom line is everything that Charles Barkley has said has been about basketball. And when you consider the fact that Barkley only went to one NBA Finals, LeBron has been the seven, that LeBron, that Barkley never won a title, but LeBron has three. There is a multitude of things that LeBron James could have attacked Barkley on strictly in regards to basketball. I consider LeBron James an incredible lucky guy this morning because nobody's perfect. All of us have skeletons. Wow. And let me tell you something right now. Barkley, like a lot of us, knows what they are about ourselves and about everybody else. Barkley did him justice. Wow. He did the right thing by saying, I'm not going to get personal because two wrongs don't make a right. LeBron was right to come back at Barkley, right to go at him because LeBron Barkley has been critical, but he was wrong to get personal, bringing up the spitting, bringing up debt in Vegas. What's that about? Well, you know, you know how much stuff happens in Vegas. You know how many trips LeBron has had to Vegas along with various others. You trying to tell me you that squeaky clean and every maybe you are, but Barkley might challenge that. You never know. So to go that route 
is just excessive. Barkley did not respond. I applaud him for that. But I also recognize that LeBron has a right to go at him for coming at him the way that he did. But he could have kept it to basketball because all the ammunition in the world was there to go at Barkley about basketball. You did not have to bring up the other personal stuff. LeBron was wrong to do that. That's my take, Pronto. That was very well stated. Very well stated. Number one, I have a problem with two African-American men going at one another, especially publicly. Yeah. This, had, this could have been resolved with a phone call. Number two, LeBron got sensitive. And we all know in the hood, when you get sensitive, it gets funny. Okay? He got sensitive because Charles hit him in an area that he was vulnerable. Charles is saying a lot of things that are 100% accurate. LeBron is as well. I do feel as though LeBron is a athlete of all athletes. Yes. What he's done on the court, off the court has been immeasur immeasurable. LeBron is that guy. When you're that guy, you don't need to try to uh, assume this guy or that guy. You're that guy. And that's the difference of the old school versus the new school. I didn't need no pass rush. I got my dude, okay? They're because that's how we operated. Today's guys, I need a pass rush, I need this, I need that. It's a different genre. It's a different man out there. LeBron got sensitive. Now he took unsolicited shots at Charles. Now the problem with this, it puts us in a situation as analysts because we know so much. We know who you are, what you are, how you are, how to get down, and we know where you're going and what you're doing. Now we must decide what can we divulge to you all and what we can't. Because we have a responsibility to be honest, but we have a responsibility to cover you as well. Now, this was all wrong. The course that LeBron took. But he did have to check Charles to let Charles know, yeah. you're not just going to come at me sideways. I'm going to let you know I, you don't get down with me like that. So he did have to check Charles. But going personal, I think he went out of bounds. They should huddle up, apologize to one another, and go on and move on with life. I don't want to reiterate what you guys just said quickly. Um, you're right, both right. LeBron didn't like the message, so he went after the messenger. That looks weak. Mm -hmm. I like the fact, though, what I've been seeing from LeBron the last couple seasons where he's the bully now. He bullied Steph in the finals. He's bullying Charles Barkley, or trying to at least. He's clapping back. I like that. Here's the problem. This is why... Charles Barkley won this if you see it as a competition of two guys pitted against each other. Not just because he's paid to give his analysis and what makes Charles Barkley so great on TV, maybe the great best guy on TV is wh whether you agree or disagree, he is going to tell you exactly what he thinks and he does not care. I mean, you gotta love Charles Barkley. Le here's the difference though. This, this reminds me of Nas and Jay-Z. This reminds me, look, when... When Nas went back at Jay-Z, ether, ether became a verb, you ethered somebody. And when LeBron went at Chuck, it was like, oh, he ethered him, he just, he just left him in flames. Here's the difference, this is why I think Jay-Z won that. I, I think the takeover beat ether, how do you like that? A lot of people don't believe that. I will tell you why. And I think Charles Barkley here beat LeBron. Because whether or not it was true, boy, what Jay said sure sounded true about Nas, right? And Jay acknowledged the things. Yeah, I sampled your voice. You were using it wrong. They, it, one was Illmatic. That's one hot album every 10-year average. He gave him credit for what he did well. He admitted his own flaws. But then he said, what's that got to do with what I said? What, you know, I still told you the truth. And what Charles Barkley just did is LeBron is right about a lot of things he said. He did his homework. I'm not going to get personal back, so you know Charles Barkley's coming from a place of uh, his truth, and it's not personal, and that sense of truth, Chuck just won. Charles uh, Barkley won that little exchange. Well, let me give my primetime moment right here. 
first of all, I love Charles Barkley. He's great on television, but I'll be damned if I'm conceding anybody's better than me. That's number one. I'm going to be real about it. I'm You're the second that. best I, on this I, show. I, I, what are you talking about? Well, we all know better. <laughs> secondly, and more important, secondly, in all seriousness, let me be very, very clear. LeBron James is a champion. LeBron James is a role model. LeBron James has conducted himself in pristine fashion and should be somebody that is revered and more respected than he even is right now, as far as I'm concerned, because of what he walked into the league with, the expectations put on his shoulders, and now how he's not only lived up to it, but he's exceeded it. Having said all of that, none of us are infallible. None of us are flawless. And LeBron was flawed because of what Prime said in terms of his sensitivity, which goes back to my final take yesterday when I said this. At the end of the day, it is my belief LeBron James is scared. Scared that his team is not good enough to beat the Warriors. And, 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 and he's disgusted. And he's disgusted. He's disgusted because he's looking at his organization and saying, damn, Golden State were runner-ups, and they went out and got Kevin Durant. Could y'all do something to make sure that we're in a position to defend our crown? LeBron James ain't scared. scared. I believe he's scared that the Cleveland Cavaliers no, ain't scared. Not him, not, him, not himself, of his team. That, Dan, then I have that his team ain't you. ready. That his team ain't ready. I think he's going through something personal where he wants to go back and repeat. We all know. Right. And he feel like these guys are not playing to standard. There you see him imploding on the sidelines, and he's trying to channel them and get them to another level. Some guys you really can't go after. He really can't go after publicly love. You can't really go after Kyrie. This is the problem. Not the ancillary guys, the, the, the help guys, you know, the, the 7, 8, 9, uh, uh, 9 through 12 guys. He can't do that. LeBron needs help. He wants help. But first and foremost, He's got to be infallible with his game before you can even ask anybody else. You're right, but where you and I differ is that they were up 3-1. If Draymond Green doesn't get suspended, I believe. Let me finish. No, 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 but let me let me go there. I'm just going to a point. If Draymond Green doesn't get suspended, chances are with that momentum having stole Game Four, I think Golden State closes it out. If you t follow that up by adding Kevin Durant in place of Andrew Bogut and Harrison Barnes, I think LeBron James with the high eye basketball IQ, he ain't scared as an individual. So the he knows he can handle his business. Is, I think he's looking at the other parts around him as a problem. The problem with that is the problem with that is satisfying. His GM wasn't doing it for him. His owner wasn't doing it for him in Cleveland. So he went out and made the team himself. I don't hold that against him. He put together a team he thought could win a championship Guys. in Miami and then in Cleveland. But when you put together a super team in order to win a championship, don't cry because someone else does it better than you. And, and Golden we, State we is got, more lower than go, you. We got to go to break. That's legit. At the end of the day, as you mentioned, it would have been fair game to attack his game, but not his personal demons. That's right. That was below the belt. And I'm happy that Charles Barkley was above it and didn't delve into that foolishness. But we know how talented LeBron James is and what a class act he is. Not his typical behavior. He's receiving the Jackie Robinson Sports Award tonight at a special presentation during the game. So hopefully... Uh, LeBron's got to be thinking, what, i got to be perfect to avoid... If you give LeBron, LeBron, you, you you don't, you LeBron don't go Carmelo, there. you're going to be upset with him, right? What's that? If you give him Carmelo, you're going to be upset with him. Oh, why he had to get Carmelo? Why couldn't he do it on his own? Right. At this, right? Uh, at that, but, but Golden State can get who they want to get, but LeBron can't. I mean, LeBron can't. We, got, we, got Kyrie Kevin Love. Leon will be back with us. We have one of the greatest quarterbacks in NFL history, Dan Marino.